to uh, participate in this conversation. We'd like you to use the microphone just so that everyone can hear your question and not just the uh, members of the panel. And so if you wouldn't mind coming up and addressing the question. You, you, you don't have to address the question. You can make comments. This is a whole land gathering after all. Um, we would like to ask you to keep your questions and comments pretty focused and you know, sort of around two minutes or so make sure that everyone gets a chance to contribute. Do you read the top till there's a question? Can I add a comment? Sure, I'll add a comment if somebody comes up, so please come up because I'm just going to bother. Um, okay, go we'll first. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, first of all, big mahalo to you guys. Really appreciate what you did. Um, it's unbelievable. My name is Hesh Goldstein. I've been doing a radio show here since 1981 called Health Talk. It's on K108, which is 1080 AM on Saturday mornings from 8 to 9. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but <laughs> anyway. Um, what I want to say is that the real reason Monsanto is doing genetically modified stuff is because they spray the hell out of it with a roundup which is their pesticide. Roundup Ready has been proven at any level of exposure to create cancer, birth defects, embryonic death, organ failure, the list goes on, DNA damage. So how do we, the small guys, combat the big guys? It's really simple. Don't buy their crap. So, when you go to a store, read labels. It's not hard to have these two things in your head called eyes. And you can look, and if it says soy, corn, or cotton, just for openers, and it doesn't say organic, and it doesn't say non-GMO, do not buy it. There was a report done by a group of scientists that proved this is what I said about the diseases beyond a shadow of a doubt. The worst part is Monsanto has known about it since the 80s. The government regulators have known about it since the 90s and they covered it up. Why would they do that? In God we trust, all of us pay cash. So the deal is, if it doesn't say organic, if it doesn't say non-GMO, leave it alone. And if it says canola, even if it says organic, don't even touch that crap with a 10-foot pole, because canola used to be an industrial solvent until somebody in Canada decided they wanted to create a vegetable oil to make money. So I appreciate what you guys are doing very much, and if there is any way I can help you, if you want to be a guest on my radio show, we can talk, think about my sample for the whole hour. I would love it. Thank you very much. And, and I think I've not wrapped my head quite around 
what a tremendous and monumental achievement this is. And I think, so when you speak to what can we do, one, like Uncle Walter said, watch your legislation. As the person who was at the Capitol um, a lot when this was all unfolding, being present, being engaged, being actively involved in labeling legislation, you know, how GMOs labeled, I think it has gone up every year um, for legislation and never passed. And what we see happen over and over is everybody gets real revved up at the beginning and then it sort of trickles off the energy and it is, that's part of it. Um, legislation is exhausting. You know, they will outpace you. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And so I think one, you know, like Uncle Walter said, I think this is a stunning turnout. And I think part of it is now with social media and all these things, use that to empower community. Use that to move towards a Hawaii that is ours, that is local. So one, legislation. Two, engage. There are advisory councils all over this university in every federal government, in every arm of government, where people get to speak. Five years ago with this humpback book, I was the only one. So I can't even believe some of the things we've been able to accomplish because mindset is changing, things are changing. It's right there, like Uncle Walter said, it just takes a spark. And then everything changes. So I think engage, sit on advisory groups. Even if you're the only one of your sort of mindset, you're one. And then recruiting, I mean, Uncle Walter and I were there because I recruited Uncle Walter to come sit on this. You know, so I think that, and then, I've had one more that I'm completely forgetting now. Um, but I think there are people who can tell you, so like, where did you go? So I think one, legislation. Above all else, really pay attention, and as exhausting as it is, constantly write in, show up, send in your testimony, call, be engaged. I think that's huge, and we underestimate that. And then, and then be active. Oh, I thought of the third one. CTAR is about to get a new dean. They are about to go through a very public process to review the final four candidates for their new dean. All of you are here. She made a point to show up at all four of those public talks and ask these questions. If this really is about Monsanto and CTAR and the work they do, then it's it's a really good opportunity. It is a huge opportunity. So I think that's one. Show up and say that. Like Uncle Walter said, advocate for a CTAR that is, you know, where they were a golden child, not the people who kept looking in the eye. Really, really quickly, I just want to say another important list of things to do is to remember that um, purchasing is a political act. And that you can in really not even showing up to these meetings. I mean, if that's not your thing, it should be. But the very act of trying to find who's able to local, local organic farm and purchasing there, and then restructuring the way you think about value. Because this, I think, a society that puts food as an afterthought is a society I see for is a food, it's like filled with hubris. I think really centering food back into its rightful role as our major occupation and what we should be accomplishing for needs to be a part of um, how we think. Monsanto's argument that well, they're going to feed the world. They're feeding the world stuff that's giving people diabetes. You know? And they're making money, let's be frank. And if they're going to be making money, I think that that's what Joseph Campbell said. Money is nothing but power to feel. And by buying from a small, local, sustainable farm, you're actually giving power to these people that legislators are going to track. So they're going to look at the indicators. So aside from the political process, not to ignore, like, taking way out, taking out who are the small farms, should be supporting and empowering them to continue to do the work to sustain.